Pumpkin? Punk oh, come on now. I'm gonna take the lens cap off. I should know better by now. Hey, bite. Pumpkin, where are you going? You gotta run away as soon as I take the camera out. You've been following me everywhere. You've been my little shadow. It's probably an unnecessary and obnoxious way to start the video. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Charlie's always been very social lately. A cat that isn't normally in the videos because he's always sleeping, but this fall weather, he's all for it. Oh, almost forgot. That's the main thing I went out in the garage for. You didn't even know I was in the garage. I didn't need to tell you any of this. Ah, it is an absolutely beautiful, but extremely, extremely blustery day. It's like 79, 82, somewhere in there. It's so nice to feel that warmth. It's been so cool, but it's windy because it's about to get cold again. So trade off, I guess. It's always nice to get a nice day. I don't have things planned out for this week. Like usually I have a bunch of things I'm planning on doing, but the last garden tour was really long. It was 48 minutes and the video part of that one was about the same. So I want to keep things just a little bit shorter. Not too much. Not because like I think people dislike long videos. I know y'all like the long videos. More just about not wanting to spend a ton of time in front of the computer over the next few days editing. The this look as that went. I could try and pick it up, but I feel like it's just gonna get blown back over. Oh, look what it did though. I guess what's done is done. Did that get into the alocasia? It did. Got right in there. Dang it. Oh, well the main stem's okay. That's that's what's important. There's one thing I do know that I need to do, and I I had said when I planted up these fall planters I was gonna put pansies in there, and then I just, I completely forgot, my bad. I'm gonna make sure to try and get that done, and then I need to start winter prep. It's early, but it's really not. It'll be October by the time this video comes out. I just jumped. I thought there's a spider in my hair. Uh, it's just a palm frond. You have to get in here, trim back the stuff that's starting to die back on the colocasia as they're starting their process, pull all their nutrients back down into their bulbs so that they can rest for the winter time. I need to get some more things cleaned up over here because I've blocked my access to be able to get back <laughs> to all of my things back here and some of them aren't looking too good. They need water and I can't get to them. You can see one of my pothos back there. There's like a glimmer of yellow. That's supposed to be a green plant. That's not a good thing. That was so cool. And when it's cool, I prefer to not water very much because then you have to worry about things like rot. But it's okay. I can get them watered. It'll be okay. The other thing I like to start doing this time of year is I start to apply silica. I am really normally start doing this in like mid-August. Ideally would do it with every watering, but it's just, that's kind of a big ask. There's already so many other things to do with fertilizing. The silica, the reason I like to use this stuff at least once a week, you're really supposed to do it with every single watering when you're doing it on containers. But what this does is it helps develop strong, sturdy cell walls in the plants, which helps make them more cold resistant, which in theory helps with their cold resistance. It's a theory. Doing that, plus making sure that things are fertilized in a nice, well-balanced way throughout the year, that helps build up sugars in the plant cells. Having those sugars in the cell walls helps prevent freezing and freeze damage. Just like, you know, it takes extreme cold to freeze alcohol. It's a similar principle behind that. So you want to make sure that the plants have lots and lots of stored sugars in their systems. It's not like you can just like magically make a plant cold hardy because of doing that. It's more about just doing little things to help. So well-balanced fertilizers and then I like that silica blast for the same reason. It helps make those cell walls nice and in my mind this is a cell wall right there my fingers that that's supposed to be a plant cell I want to make that nice and firm and rigid so it's not like i go around and apply that to things like the adenidia palms they get it i make sure that they have some of it not as much for cold hardiness reasons but more because they get moved around a lot and they're a soft trunked palm so that will help prevent bruising and damaging focus it more on the plants that will be out all winter long like the sable miners there's some needle palms back there not as much the gingers. It's time for them to start resting. These are all dieback plants, not the plumeria. The elephant ears and the bananas. Those are dieback plants. So I don't worry about them as much, but anything that might be out here into the cold. Like the mule palms, they stay out for a pretty long time during the winter. I only take them in when it drops below like 15 to 18 degrees Fahrenheit. It's very important that these plants are nice and solid. The they're well fed and have that extra rigidity in them. Oh, why that sentence fell apart right as it was coming out of my mouth. Oleander, another one. They need the silica blast because they'll be out here longer. Any new evergreens like this holly that's going to need it. The fetsias, I leave them out till it gets pretty cold too. And I especially want to make sure that it gets onto that green giant arborvitae that's back here because it's its first year in the ground so I want to make sure that just about 
I would say every day for the next two weeks that it's going to get uh, probably about four gallons of water with one teaspoon, with four teaspoons. So one teaspoon per gallon of that silica blast just to help get it through its first winter. Just a little extra thing to fall back on. Like I said, it's not necessarily something that's going to save the plants and guarantee they get through a winter or rough storms, but it helps. Yeah, that's basically it. I'm gonna plop some pansies in the ground. I already told you about the silica blast stuff. Oh, and then repots. Lots of repots. I should have said that back in the beginning when I was trying to list things off. Oops. I big Monstera. Hopefully I'll get that repotted. I don't know if that's going to be its own video or if I'll just do it in the vlog. I have a philodendron that needs to be repotted. I think I should repot one of my other climbing Monsteras that again is hidden away and blocked by all of this chaos here. So I need to do something about all this stuff. Just last minute things. I have a lot of heliconias that I want to lift and dig and put them into a better draining soil for the winter time too. Inside a soil that holds too much moisture, they'll they'll just rot. Heliconias are, well, we'll talk about that. You'll see. So I guess first things first, I need to find a spot for this guy. I, I told myself to just stop. Sometimes when I'm doing pruning and projects and I just don't really like the direction it's going I found the best thing to do is to just to just step away and leave it be so I mean I want to do something with the rocks make it look more pretty but for the time being I just I just need my table also I'm not supposed to be picking stuff up right now so yeah, I don't really know what to do here I really want to get those pansies plate I guess we can just do it on the ground that'll work tripod doesn't come down this low so it's gonna be a little bit wiggly it's all right we'll make it work these are Kind of long and stretchy. Are they trailing? They're not labeled as trailing pansies. That's a little bit bizarre. Oh, they're going to be hanging because I'm not going to be cutting them back or anything right now. It's important to get these pansies in before all these plants start putting their roots out because I kind of have to have to dig in a little bit further than I would like to. These these pansies actually have some pretty big root balls on them. Okay, get a white and a I don't know what that is. Red, kind of maybe sort of orange one over there and then a yellow is there only one yellow in here i think there might be two hey that's better i finished it off camera i don't i don't have a tripod that sits down this low and it just it wasn't i wasn't enjoying myself there's all that it was just me i was just being selfish had a mixture of reds yellows whites reds yellows whites reds there's a blue one down here the only reason it's there is because it was tucked into the same plug as the red one i'd rather it not be there but i it felt like if I pulled it out, it probably would just rip the plant. Just to say, I say, it's okay. I'll just leave it there. Pansies, I think I talked about this in the fall planter video. Pansies and alyssum. Two plants I don't like to use in videos because they just always look terrible for me right when I plant them up. They usually need a couple of days. And that's, that's also partially because I do disturb their root mass quite a bit trying to get them down into their pots so that'll do that they tend to flop over and just sort of throw a fit but that's okay they'll be fine i'll tuck that back so that's a nice improvement a lot more color what i like about this the reason i wanted to make sure to go ahead and get some of these pansies in here is that i wanted some containers out here that will also have winter and spring interests and depending on the winter if it's a mild winter the pansies will usually keep going throughout the winter and they don't really keep growing this kind of holds still. They'll have a few flowers on them and it just looks nice to have that extra pop of color outside. The alyssum, this lobularia, it will stop when we start to get frost, but they enjoy the cool nights. They put on a show, they smell great. But when it gets to being actual winter time, this mum will die back, the alyssum will die back. I can lift this mum out and I can throw a kale or a cabbage in the middle, or I think I had mentioned maybe just throwing like a bunch of pine cones or something in there. I don't know. I'll play around with it. Just something that'll be evergreen though, or at least just look kind of cool. And then I could end up leaving that ornamental grass back there. It'll die back and just be brown, but that'll add some nice texture. So I could leave it, but I feel like if I'm going to be going for more of a winter into spring planter at that point, this is probably going to be around mid to late November, maybe even into December, then it would make more sense to put a kale or a cabbage or something in there. It would have a lot more interest during the winter time than just like a pile of pine cones. I just remembered that the baseball game's about to start. So this is all, I could have just waited and done all this tomorrow. I'm gonna go inside. I wanna watch the baseball game. Oh, well, oops, we'll be back tomorrow. Ha, huh. wasn't that the truth? Pumpkin was playing with his fortune this morning. I couldn't help but giggle because it was like five minutes after I saw the upcoming weather forecast. 
I knew there were going to be some cooler nights coming up, but 38 degrees? Didn't see that coming. You know how it is this time of year. Forecasts are all over the place, so I tend to always kind of take those with a grain of salt. But I do have a few plants that are just, they're not going to be very happy with that. Where we, as soon as I point the camera at you. What are you doing, bite? Pumpkin. Pumpkin. Okay, nice to see you too. So, 38 degrees. What does that mean for the garden? Well, really not much. The ground's still warm. There's a body of water here. 38 degrees isn't likely to do much damage to most of what I have out here. But again, that's just mo most. What's happening here? What are you guys doing? Okay, weird. It's just weird things going on around here. Yesterday I was sitting at the table and the umbrella just started going down all on its own. It was just very slowly, the little handle here just started turning on there and the whole thing just, it just closed itself up. I was like, um, okay, weird. I don't know what that was about. I went ahead and I just put it back up and it it hasn't done it since. You might remember, this was like $100. It was a really, really cheap umbrella. Not that $100 isn't a lot of money, but for a, I think this was 10 and a half or 11 foot umbrella, like that's a, that's a pretty good price. So I'm not shocked by that, but also, I mean, it was probably a ghost. So what I'm going to do, instead of all the things I talked about doing in the beginning of the vlog, I need to focus more on who is going to die if I don't bring them inside. This die might be a little bit extreme. Just what plants are going to suffer a little bit. I'd rather them not have to go through anything, obviously. And then I have to balance out what am I able to actually even pick up and move. Luckily, I think most of the plants I have out here that are going to be really cold sensitive are things that are pretty small. Like the Elocasia Morocco, I should probably move that in. I think that would be a good idea. Coconut palm, I'll take that in and all the little coconuts just to be safe. All my gingers, eh. They'll be okay. They're getting ready to start to fizzle back and die down anyways. The Eureka palm can hack it. This palm tree's been outside colder than 38 before. So have the Adenidias and even my, my tie. I know you would think, oh, that needs to go in. Eh, it's been out here colder than 38 before. Not much colder, but it can take it. Especially because like I said, the ground's still warm. I'm not that concerned about it. I might, maybe I'll throw a frost cloth over the area just to be safe. Can't imagine anything too bad is going to happen to that plant. But like I mentioned, I have the frost cloth just in case. I'm gonna go ahead and figure out a different place to put all of these. I'm gonna need the gorilla cart to start gathering plants and getting them ready to go inside. All right, okay. Yeah, I don't wanna forget though, before I start doing any of that, one of the first things I like to do when there's going to be a cold snap and the plants, like I just seem to kind of write it out for a few days. So when I like to come over to my irrigation and make sure everything got watered, which all the zones have run uh, twice already today. So they've gotten some water. So I'm just going to go ahead and shut those off. Yeah, the plants might end up looking thirsty tomorrow, but that's okay. Not the end of the world. I can just come out here in the morning, open those valves back up, everything will get watered and then I can shut it back off and not have to worry about it. I don't want the plants wet when it's gonna be cold. I think I already even mentioned that in this vlog. I talk about that all the time. Wet and cold just, it's not a good combination. So when I get little issues like this, I can just hand water. That's not a big deal, just very light drinks. Need to make some space over here because I can't, I already said, yeah, I blocked myself off. I can't get to a lot of my plants. I'm going to kind of condense this down into a smaller pack. Don't need that anymore. Oh, I moved the Japanese maple bonsai. It turned out, I was thinking it was going to be hard to move. I wasn't able to get it up onto the table, but on the table, I was able to get my arms underneath it and just not lift it. I just kind of let my arms hang and I set it up on the wall down over there. We'll probably see it later. Realize I should probably do that watering thing that I was just talking about before I forget about it. See myself coming over here in a few hours and seeing this whole thing just all wilted and sad and going, oh, oops, I forgot about that. I spent like a solid five minutes trying to figure out what to do with all the cabbage and kale. And then I was like, I can just, just put it on the ground. That, just, that I don't have to put it someplace special. So the gorilla carts cleared out, got the coconut palm, alocasia, Morocco, another plant that I haven't talked about. I don't know if I will, maybe someday, we'll see. Just need to go ahead and 
make some room so I can get back here and get the little guys out. And this should, yeah, okay, all right, that works. It's a foldable table, so I need to be careful. I don't want it to collapse. Orchids, ah, the orchids. Usually those are actually much more cold tolerant than you would think they would be. Not this Tremanthi though, those I should probably grab. And I don't mean all orchids, just the ones that I have. Exactly, now how am I gonna go about grabbing this one though? Floating in water, which is actually even more of a reason to go ahead and get it moved. I should find like a, what am I, but how am I gonna do this? Now, I tried to find a bucket or something to set it in, but no luck, so it'll just have to come on out of there for now. Kinda wedge it in there. Oh, that's fine. Okay, so what I was concerned about was that I would put it in here and then the weight of the pot would kind of collapse down because these have a flexible bottom on them. Like that could easily be pushed up and then the plant would pop right out of there, kind of like a push pop. But it, you saw it, it's fine. I will say though, that did not smell good. My crocodile fern, this poor thing. So many of my plants, I just kind of tucked them back into the shade this year and so this one really didn't get much love, but it pulled through. It did okay. It doesn't look fantastic, but it's definitely done a lot of growing since the last time you guys saw this plant. You, I don't think the crocodile ferns been on this channel, probably since I did the crocodile fern video. It was around in other videos, but wasn't actually like spotlighted or shown or anything like that for now. I'm gonna set that in the shade for now. That's not very shady, is it? Okay, who else? What else is back here? The Dracaena, that'll be okay. It's not going to hurt it one little cool night. It'll be all right. These macho ferns, I love them, but they get so big, they've kind of eaten up this area. And I think there might be some plants tucked in underneath here that I need to get out. Oh, there's another spike on this orchid. You can kind of see it up there. The Vandacious orchids, I have had these outside in pretty cool temperatures before and they'll be okay as long as they're not wet and as long as it's brief. It has to be a very brief cold snap. It can't go on for very long. But don't let that fool you. They are heat lovers. These are plants that really prefer it to be warm, but they're not just going to drop dead if there's a cold snap. Depending on the type, there are lots of different types. So there's another spike. I'm wondering though if the ones that have flower spikes on them, if I should move those or at least lay them on the ground so that the buds don't die off. I don't know, I'm gonna think on that one. If the bromeliads, they'll be okay. Even the philodendron, it's going to be brief, so that should be alright too. Catlia type orchids, they'll be alright. The Rapidophora, this one right here, I think that should go in just to be safe. These tend to be a little bit more temperamental. This was actually one of the plants that I was planning on doing a repot in in this video but I think the best thing to do would be just to move it into safety for right now I don't think that this would be a good time to repot this I don't think that would go very well look at all these little roots that have been growing out though this is where the plant was in contact with that stone wall that's back there so it started putting out roots all along its nodes I could go ahead and segment those off and cut them up and repot them up and start other plants if I wanted to. I really don't need more plants. I think there's enough to deal with out here. Oh yeah, definitely don't want to forget this guy. This has got to come in. Another plant that was going to get repotted in this video just doesn't seem like the smart time to do that. Go ahead and drop this one down into there. Look at the leaves on this. Such a pretty plant. I should try and find a shady spot to move this to because a lot of these plants are going from deep, deep shade right into the sun and that's not a good idea. Come Come on, come back here. Filtered light will be okay. This severely needs a repotting. It needs to get up onto a support. That pot it's in is so tiny. A lot of what's in here could really probably take just a brief cold snap, but some of the plants that I'm moving in, it's solely just because if they become damaged, it would be really hard to replace them. Some of them, one of them actually would probably be impossible to replace. So just to be safe, may as well take those in. Is there anything else tucked underneath here? There better not be. Oop, that's all clear. And now I can get back to watering my pothos. That poor, do you see it? That yellow one back there? Poor plant. Oh, it got so dry. The air this time of year, it's very dry. We have really humid summers and then fall and winter, it's like bone dry. Such a big difference between growing the plants when it's wet and sticky outside and then the dry air comes in and it's amazing. It can be 20 degrees cooler it could be 95 degrees during the summer and you don't have to water as often as you do when it's 70, but the air's dry. Thinking I should probably move the Dyphon Bakia in. It's just a little one. Little plants tend to be more tender, so may as well 
just to be safe, go ahead and toss this into the cart with everyone else. Did also remember to grab my Stapelia Gigante. I threw that in there. Could probably handle a brief cold snap, but just to be safe, I don't want to do anything that's going to mess up its flowering this winter. The Dracaena Draco. These can take brief cold snaps, and we've been down to 41 a few times already, just like random cold snaps. So I don't think 38 is going to be a drastic enough difference. I might take this, move it over to where the Thai is, the Monstera, and uh, also throw the coconut palms in the mix, the little ones, not the big one that's already in the cart, and just throw a frost cloth over them, lay them on the ground just to be safe, but I think it should be okay. Oh, the papaya. These do not like cold. I don't know that one night at 38 degrees is going to do much to it, but just to be safe, I'll throw it on the cart. It did some good growing this year for a papaya. It didn't do very much at all, but I didn't get this until late summer, so it's really only been potted up for maybe two months. It probably doubled in size. Papayas, though, you can easily get six feet out of them in a single season. That's like on the low end. This variety though I think is one of the smaller growing ones. I can't remember. This is one of those plants I ordered when I was coming out of anesthesia after one of my surgeries so I don't exactly remember the variety name on it. I just was like I want to grow papayas again. I haven't done that in a long time and now here we are. I thought it might be fun to see how they do in the grow space during the winter time. Now, they tend to be relatively inexpensive so I thought it would just be a fun thing to have around and see how it does. I have a feeling it's going to be kind of a pain just because they can get such a wide spread on the top, such a wide canopy, and I don't really want a ton of things anymore that get super wide because it blocks out light from everything underneath them. But I can make my decisions to whether or not I want to actually keep the papaya later for now. Let's move it in. Oh, the ginger. I definitely want to take this in. It could handle that brief cold snap, but it just now started flowering, and the ginger flowers can last a pretty long time, so I'd like to be able to enjoy that as long as I can. I'll go ahead and move that one in also. Don't smash my Monstera down there. That's not good. And then the Heliconias. I have lots of different varieties. While they don't like the colds, it's a brief snap isn't going to kill them. It'll halt flowering and it will halt any leaf development. As long as they aren't sopping wet, they'll be okay for a couple of nights. The heliconias just haven't done that much this year. So I'm not exactly thinking that taking them in when we have a brief cold snap is suddenly gonna make them into big, beautiful plants. That we didn't have the heat for them to begin with. So if they fizzle a little bit before I move them in, it's okay. I kind of consider those the heliconias, all the ones they have to be already in the needs improvement category so it's fine so i'm not as concerned about them they won't look great after a cold snap but i just i have too many to move those in right now i don't my grow space isn't set up i haven't fixed the grow space from last winter yet so for now that's something i was planning on working on next week and the week after but yeah we make plans and then that's just the universe just laughs at us which is fine. It's not a big deal. This is easy. And it's kind of fun walking around, looking at the plants and talking about them a little bit. Yeah, it's funny. Out of everything out here, all of the plants that I've been moving around and doing things with, my basket grass is what I've been the most concerned about. Pardon my florp. I should move the florp. You don't need to look at the florp. These are plants that I just have the hardest time getting a hold of. The nurseries rarely sell them. I've actually, I've only grown them I want to say one time, might have been two years in a row, generally sold as an annual, horribly invasive, where it can grow outside all year round. But that's not the case up here in St. Louis. This is a variegated variety of it. I'm going to do a separate video on it, just so that might sound boring. It's grass. I'm going to be trying my best to overwinter these. I found four of them on Etsy. Again, this is another thing I ordered one, one of the days when I was coming out of anesthesia. I don't regret any of those plants that I ordered, but these I was really excited about because I just, like I said, I have the hardest time finding them. The nurseries never sell them. They sell bridal veil in place of it, and that's a different plant. These will get much longer and they have a, more of a wild appearance to them. They trail generally two to three feet. I just said I wasn't going to say that much about these because I'm going to do a separate video on them. Anyways, you get the point. I've had a hard time getting a hold of them so I'm going to do my best to keep these until next year so that I can work them into hanging baskets next year. The case with a lot of the plants, with a lot of my decision making as to what to move in and what not to move in, right now things that are going in, it's just temporary. It's only for a few days and then I'll pop them back out because it's going to warm back up. I don't know for how long, but it's going to warm back up. Something I'm trying to consider though with some plants that sometimes I might treat more as an annual, 
I'm trying to think about, well, what's the availability going to be like next year? Because the nurseries and the growers really sold through things this year because of all the pandemic planting, which is great. Lots of people got into gardening who hadn't done it before. And I think that that's fantastic. But that is definitely going to have an impact next year, probably the year after, probably for a few years, as far as what's available and what we see at the nurseries. So there will be plants that I typically could rely on maybe being able to find. This isn't one of them. But, you know, something like, well, heliconias. Typically, I can find those for sale online. But I don't know if that's going to be the case next year. Because a lot of growers might be subbing in heliconias into orders that where they won't be able to fulfill other things that maybe would normally be ordered. Like, I don't, I don't know. What would be a good example? A lot of large commercial growers have contracts with these big box companies. And oftentimes there will be SKUs that they just say, okay, we'll make sure we can supply these for you on the regular and make sure that those things stay fulfilled. But then there can be instances where all of a sudden those really common plants that are really easy to propagate if they don't have those plants then sometimes they will sub out for other things which can be good or bad might end up going to a big box store and they maybe they just got in a bunch of assorted tropicals which would typically be things like majesty palms the cane yuccas the corn plants spathophyllums those sorts of things things you see all the time if there's lower availability of those because it takes a few years to grow some of those things out to be large enough to ship out so the growers may not have them because they've sold through so many of them then they may sub out for other things that they wouldn't normally be shipping out to those stores you get what i'm saying so i might be finding the basket grass next year because it might be subbed in for bridal's veil or something else i don't know these aren't plants that are really hard to propagate though these are plants that can be propagated in a single season so that shouldn't be an issue it's that's going to be more the case with larger plants plants that need a few years to get going until they're big enough to ship out and there's also likely i already saw some of it this year but maybe those plants that are on the regular skew list will still be shipped out like majesty palms let's stick with that one They'll probably still be getting those in, but I bet you they're going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. That's actually what happened a few years ago with the Bird of Paradise, the White Bird of Paradise. It used to be a White Bird of Paradise in a 10-inch pot would usually be at least three and a half to four feet tall. And that's on the small end. Generally, they're about five to six feet tall. And they'd run you anywhere from like, I don't know... $12.99 to $39.99. Just depends on where you're getting them from. Whereas over these last few years, the ones that are in 10 inch containers are like maybe two feet tall and they're tiny little baby plants, which is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's fun to grow your plants up. I'm just predicting that that's probably going to be how things look next year. I think that there's going to be a probably a nice variety of plants available, but it might be a little bit different from what we're used to. At least come like, I would say, late spring into early summer when they've kind of moved through a lot of what they had left and what they were able to get going and then the plants will start shrinking and the variety will change up one of my local big box stores i was in there last week or the week after and a bunch of their assorted tropicals that they had coming in were all kinds of really fun elephant ears and gingers and things that they don't normally sell this far north especially in late september they had an order to fill for tropical plants so that's what got shipped up these aren't things i normally have to think about this time of year unless there's been like really big hurricanes those can have the same impact i remember after hurricane maria hit new orleans that actually changed the houseplant game for a few years really the plants that were available commonly available just change the sizes change and really actually when i think about it the houseplant and tropical game really hasn't been the same since that hurricanes can have such a big impact it wiped out so many nurseries that were growing plants that come up north and when they regrouped a lot of them switched over to plants that were different and easier to propagate did i say hurricane maria i meant to say katrina hurricane katrina anyway i don't really know where all that came from i was just kind of talking about my thought process with some of the plants and why something as insignificant as what's just an annual something that grows invasively and takes over places down in florida but up here where i live harder to get a hold of i think that's because like i said the bridal veil is 
for some reason more popular. I don't know why. I think this is so much better. But anyways, these are already starting to get some color change on them. That's largely because I need to actually bump these up a pot size. I'm not going to do right now, even though I am very tempted. It just doesn't seem like a good idea. I think that would be a bad idea. It'll warm up in like four days, and then I can do that. I think that's everything, though. The philodendron, that's definitely coming in. I didn't want to put it in the cart. I didn't want to shock it by setting it in the sun. But it definitely does need to come in, and it has a new leaf that it's working on putting out. And you guys, if you saw the video, it just wasn't rooted very well. It's not a strong established plant yet, so that needs to go in for sure. I think that might be everything. I'll do a last minute sweep out here tomorrow night because I'm sure I'm forgetting something. And with the heliconias, I might go ahead and grab a few of them just to be safe. They should be okay because like I said, they're not doing anything right now anyway, so I don't think that a cold snap is going to change their behavior because they're already just kind of hanging out and doing a whole bunch of nothing. And that's just the way it's going to be until I get them inside and get them into the warm grow space and I still have a few weeks left of getting that set up, which is another reason this video is a little bit shorter than a normal vlog because I just there's just so much to do I, and I need to rest my eyes from the computer screen and focus on getting that grow space fixed up and ready to go. If you don't know, grow spaces, it's my garage. I put my plants in the garage and I put plastic around everything and put some heaters in there. It's a whole thing. You'll see. I'm trying to take things on kind of a day-by-day -day basis this year because I tend to get pretty stressed out in October because there's usually just so much to do to get everything ready to go inside. And uh, I just there's no point in doing any of that. This, these are plants that should be fun. I've been working on kind of restructuring my mind frame. Yeah, if it's not fun, why do it? These are plants. So while I had other things I was going to do this week, this is what's going on instead, which is fine. I think it was actually kind of nice to just walk around and talk about what I do when there's going to be a sudden cold snap. And basically I just go for what I consider to be irreplaceable or what's maybe fragile. Anything that, you know, isn't going to be able to handle a few cool nights move that in. If it's too big to move in, then I will lay it down on the ground and throw a frost cloth over it. As long as it's just for a night or two and it's going to warm back up very quickly, which it is. It's going to be chilly for a few nights and it's going to warm back up and there's still plenty of ground warmth from summertime. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. Again, sorry about the shorter video. There's just so much to do in that garage to get it ready to move the plants and so the videos might get a little bit shorter for a while just because that's where I need to put my focus. I was hoping to be able to finally give a mum update, but those mums from Proven Winners are just taking the longest time to open. I did that video over a week ago, and then I said in the the garden tour, I said I would do an update on them when they open up, and they still like weren't opened up, and here we are, what, almost two weeks later? Still, they're still opening. But they're getting closer. I mean, this one's, this pink Stacy mum, it's fairly well open. It still needs to open up some more, but it's getting there. The key lime, it's still, it's still working on it too. Anyways, comment down below. Say hi, I love talking to everybody. What's your fall process? You see what's going on in mine. October is just the chaos when all the chaos starts to happen. Anyways, everybody's doing well. The noise. That's one thing I was telling some people about. I usually really just can't stand fall. I already talked about how I'm ready to move on from it. But another thing, it is so much easier filming videos in the house than it is outside. Especially because I'm more talkative at nighttime. I can't do a lot of videos out here at nighttime. I have some lights, but it's just I don't like the way the image comes out. The quality is just not quite there. But late fall through winter, I have like a whole thing set up and I can just film whenever I want to. I don't have to worry about background noise except for maybe some screaming parrots sometimes, occasional dog barks, but it's just, it's nothing like filming outside. I love being out here. There are just a lot more restrictions and things that have to be worked around when you, you know, the neighbors and the just construction. There's been construction everywhere near my house this summer and it has been so much noise.